Hello everyone and welcome to Witch Ways. If you're watching this in real time, close to the time I post it, I am celebrating Samhain season. I'm celebrating all things crone with the hair color and everything else in my life. And so today we're going to talk about the basic principles of banishing. Banishing can be a really big topic um, because it touches on a lot of other forms of magic, cutting ties, um, what you want for yourself, setting boundaries. But today I'm gonna just keep it really simple and go over some basic beginner and user-friendly practices and go over a few specific techniques. Enjoy. So what kinds of things can you banish? You can banish pretty much anything. It's good to start really simply. And I think a good place to start is banishing kind of minor, irritating and annoying things that have stuck to you and just start with banishing those out of your own energy field. You can also banish personal habits that you wanna move out of yourself, um, whether those are physical or emotional things, but that is a few steps up. People think a lot about banishing other people from their lives, and that is certainly fine to do. You have every right to set that boundary. It might be helpful to talk to someone a little more experienced about that. When you're thinking about banishing, you might want to think about if there's another type of magic that would be more effective. A couple weeks ago, I talked about protection magic that might be more effective and might be easier for you to do doing shielding work or doing magic around cutting ties with someone. Banishing is just sort of a step up from clearing. And the bigger the thing that you need to banish, the more complex it is, the more deeply hooked it is into your life, the more you probably want to add some things and some protections and different caveats onto that banishing. Here's a few things that you might want to add into your working if your banishing is more complex or it's something that's deeply hooked. You could try burning protective or clearing herbs during the working. You could always add the phrase this or better to any thing that you speak during the ritual or during the working, or you could say that at the end, this or better. You could call in a protective magical ally. You could also have a trusted circle of friends come and join you to hold space for you, actively cut things off of you. And you could also put some obsidian for protection and grounding and transformation on the altar. You can do banishing work anytime. But if you work with time of day, moon phase, and season, you could add a little more strength. Doing your banishing work at night is helpful as the energy of the end of the day can really help clear things away and pulling on that dark energy that is naturally restorative to us as humans can help with just resetting and clearing things away. Waning moon is another time when you can do magical banishing work. The further into the waning moon phase you are, the more powerful the moon tides are at pulling things out of your life that you don't want to have there. Dark moon itself is probably the most powerful time. And I generally consider that to be 48 hours prior to the time that the moon turns to new. Personally, I think the most powerful time of year is the time surrounding Samhain, that Samhain season that we're in. And the way that I work with that is that I consider Samhain season to be about three weeks prior to Samhain and three weeks after. 
but that might vary for you. So if you're working to get some very powerful uh, banishing energy to assist you, you might want to do your banishing work at night on a dark moon sometime in that Samhain season. The easiest way to start to practice banishing is to work on things that are like minorly an irritating to you or annoyances or something that happened that you just quickly need to let go of and reset and move on to the next thing. And start by just taking a couple of deep breaths and get clear on your intent that you want to just let go of this out of your energy field and then start by deepening your breath and when you feel ready focus your intention on where that has hooked in your body or on the hamster wheel uh, thoughts that are going around in reaction to it take a breath and just really focus on that and imagine it encircled by a color or a texture and just kind of breathe into it and really focus your attention on it. And then when you're ready, gather in your breath and take a deep breath and breathe it out, maybe using an audible breath, a big sigh, uh, a little bit of sound. And then with your hands, just take it and like whoosh, shove it off push it away, push it out, let it disperse to a place where it can dissolve, see it going away harmlessly and not directed at anybody. And then just take a few restorative breaths. You can imagine it moving away and dispersing in a counterclockwise direction if you want, which is known as Widdershins and then just walk away and you're done. For something that's bigger than a momentary irritation that's more like a personal habit or you know just anything that's a little bigger than that there's another simple technique that you can use and you'll need a heat proof container, matches, paper and pencil. This is sort of classic witchcraft banishing. So start by being clear on the thing that you want to banish and cast a circle. And again, I have videos up on how to cast a circle. Take a breath and then write on the piece of paper the thing that you want to banish. Take a moment and breathe your intention into that piece of paper what it is that you want to banish and when you feel ready light it with a match and drop it in a heat proof burn proof container and you might have to try more than once sometimes to burn it um, it might be it might just want to keep going out when it's done you can put the ashes down running water and that can be a toilet or a drain. Then open your circle. Another way to use fire, which is a very quick acting element, is to use a banishing candle. So what you'll need is a candle. I like a small candle, a tea light, or a birthday candle. And uh, put it in on a heat proof container like a bowl of sand or something that will make sure that nothing catches on fire. You can make it stronger by adding a bowl of dark moon water nearby, which I talked about a couple weeks ago. And, or you can take a drop or two of that dark moon water and put that on your candle as well. You don't have to add those things. You can just do the candle, but it, you get a little dark moon energy in there um, is nice or you can just do this on the night of a dark moon. So this time when you cast, you cast a circle just around the candle itself. Light it and speak your intention, what you want to banish into the candle and then let it burn, holding the intention that when the candle is done burning, the circle opens and the magic is released into the world. 
Another method of banishing is asking for help from deity or any spirit beings that you work with. And this one's really helpful when you're trying to release a personal habit or, you know, something that is just a character flaw that you're really trying to work through. And asking for help can make it a lot easier. And what you do is you do either of the two techniques I mentioned above, only you add to it an altar to the being that you want to help you. And you specifically ask that being during the ritual to help you in banishing and releasing this thing and then make an offering afterwards to that being of something that will be appreciated by them. Banishing can be an important part of social justice work. I think it's important to take some time with your intention, get some feedback on your intention, particularly if you come from any kind of place of privilege. Um, but I think that there's a lot of banishing work that could be done that would be very effective. Sometimes protection work is more needed. There's some things that I think it's useful to do after you do any kind of banishing work. Many of these you should do after any form of magic. Definitely shower afterwards. Clear any tools that you used, um, especially because you might use your tools for invoking magic and you don't want the pattern of banishing to be permanently embedded in them. It's always good to follow up with some kind of physical action that reinforces the magic you did around banishing. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about Samhain season magic, I will be posting some videos um, in the next couple weeks, but I also will be teaching a class, an online class, and I'll put the link to that in the description below the video. Thanks for watching and please take care of yourselves and be well.